Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. As for our industry interview project, we have come up with a documentary video about MRK syndrome, which are rarely people know about this. Why we choose this topic? The reason we have chosen this topic is to have understanding about MRK syndrome and to highlight some survival skills behind the struggle. We also want to spread the awareness among people to support all survivors despite what challenge they have to go through. We choose Madam Wani Ardi or Nur Shazwani Binti Abdul Rahim as she is the founder of MRK Support Group. She is also an author, folk performer and singer songwriter. This 36 years old woman who was born on 25 October 1994 has completed their postgraduate degree in creative writing at Macquarie University. She represented Malaysia at various festivals in Sydney, Melbourne, Jakarta, Makassar, and Singapore. She also represented Malaysia at Global MRK Conference in Australia for Malaysia MRK Community. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for interviewing me. Uh, my full name is Nur Shazwani bin Ti Abdul Rahim, but uh, people usually know me as Wani Ardi. So um, I am basically um, a published um, poet. Uh, I also happen to be a singer songwriter, and by having those platforms, by having um, readers, listeners, and followers from those two. Um, careers, uh, I might say, uh, I started to become an advocate as well. So I advocate for the MRK syndrome. So um, what is MRK in general? Uh, MRK stands for uh, Mayor Rakitensky uh, MRK Custer Hauser Syndrome. So it's the name of four um, doctors or scientists who have discovered this um, condition. So MRK syndrome is a congenital disorder and when I say congenital it means that a condition that you were born with. It's not something that happened gradually as you grow up but it's something that uh, you were born with. Um, it's a congenital disorder where a female was born without a uterus uh, as well as uh, without an upper vagina and it is considered as a rare condition because it happens to one in every 4,000 to 5,000 women all around the world. Yeah. But as years pass by, uh, we discovered that it's becoming more frequent and now it's happening to one in every 4,000 to 4,500. 4, so uh, we have research on uh, the population of Malaysia I would say approximately there should be about 3,000 to 3,500 um, Malaysian women uh, who were born with MRK. Right now we have only found about 200. Uh, from earlier on, I know for a fact that this will not be easy and uh, this is not something that I will be able to accept overnight. Uh, confidence, uh, strength is not something that will happen overnight. It takes years for me to build this confidence and this strength. Even at this point, I wouldn't label myself as a strong person or a confident person because to me, it's a lifelong learning process. Uh, I take it day by day and I never pressure myself to like, you know, when you be strong, you cannot be weak. I never pressure myself like that. Like, if I have moments of weakness, I stay in that moment of weakness. Uh, I'll limit myself, maybe like, uh, okay, I'm feeling down, I'm feeling sad, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna, you know, embrace uh, this feeling for maybe, I give it a limit of maybe two weeks. After two weeks, I have to pick up myself. I have to get up, you know? So that's what I have been doing. Like, I don't deny my negative feelings. Uh, whatever feelings that I, that I have, negative or positive, I embrace all of them. So, um, MRK Malaysia uh, essentially is a support group. So, the objective is to give um, 
initially uh, it was meant to give um, mental and emotional support to its members why i started this support group because i didn't want other mrk girls to feel as isolated as confused as lonely as i was um, growing up because growing up as an mrk girl it was a very lonely journey in the sense of um, i couldn't find friends who were in my shoes like if i wanted to talk to my girlfriends they couldn't relate to it because i would be talking about not having period and not being able to get pregnant and having all this possibility of um, you know having problem with my kidneys and things like that so my normal girlfriends they couldn't relate to it they would be like you know sabalawani you know just those kind of things and uh, that was not enough so i thought you know it would be really nice if there's somebody else who's exactly like me and i can share things with them in 2017 we are so lucky to have um uh hukm um the gynecologist at hukm uh the ong unit in hukm obstetric and gynecology unit in hukm join in mrk malaysia and become our official partner we have doctors so the, the advice that we exchange are not just advice uh from uh, mrk women but also from professionals uh, from health uh, healthcare practitioners yeah if i want to contribute something to the society um i have to it has to be something something that is very personal to me and something that i'm very passionate about as a lecturer i was sharing about creative writing i was sharing up about poetry and lyrics but now as an advocate i'm sharing about uh, awareness uh, mental health awareness sexual health awareness about female empowerment and things like that. The person who inspire me would probably be uh Christina Ruth. So Christina Ruth is uh the co-founder of Beautiful You Foundation in the US. So mm. Christina was the very first MRK women that I talked to. These are the things that they actually discuss about and it's very healthy, very healthy discussion. Uh, so uh, being in Australia really opened my eyes um, towards the importance of health awareness. When I was first diagnosed with MRK syndrome when I was 17, um, I had no idea that it was called MRK syndrome because the doctor didn't mention to me that it was called MRK syndrome. Uh, she just mentioned to me that you don't have any uterus, you don't have an upper vagina. That's all. So I did my own research. I found the Beautiful You Foundation, and I talked to the co-founder, who was Christina Ruth. And the feeling was just, how do I say it? Very powerful. Like um, the feeling of looking at someone who who is in the same condition as you. So the first MRK woman who I talked to was not a Malaysian, but an American. that moment really inspired me to like it's like okay i want to start a support group because i want to find malaysian girls just like me so that i can have that conversation yeah yeah our our biggest challenge is definitely to reset the mind of malaysians um to reset our mentality our mindset that's definitely the biggest obstacle and definitely not something that can be achieved in a year or two years or three years it probably going to take i don't know 10 years like what i say is now 10 years ago it was not a common thing to talk about mental health so maybe it will take another 10 years um for our society to understand that happiness and rezeki doesn't come only in the form of being married or being a biological mother i think um uh how we can how we can uh, improve uh, the way malaysian think is through you know um continuous um advocacy uh, continuous um effort in raising awareness this is something that we cannot get bored of talking about of course it's it's totally it's wonderful to have to be married it's wonderful 
to be able to be pregnant. Mm. Women who cannot get pregnant, uh, they also have a function in this world uh, because um, God doesn't create us for nothing. Just remember what my auntie used to tell me. Uh, she's a head nurse in Sremban and she told me that, you know, uh, one of girls like you, girls who cannot pregnant like you, uh, are important in this world because you are the ones who will adopt unwanted babies. Um, the biggest challenge is to reset the mind of uh, the elderly, the senior citizen. Uh, because I, I also give a consultation for uh, parents of MRK girls. Mm. So parents of MRK girls, they are very worried. Uh, they are always so panicky. They uh, they worry that they do, their daughters will never get married. You know, what if my daughter? What mm. what if nobody wants my daughter? What if uh, she gets married and then her husband leave her? Things like that. So I say, you know, even normal women, even normal women experience divorce. So it even can happen to anyone, not just marriage women. For me personally, I think uh, my biggest achievement as an MRK advocate would probably be uh, last year when I um, represented Malaysia in the Global MRK Conference. Mm. Uh, last year, I think it was November, uh, uh, there was this uh, Global MRK Conference. It was held in Melbourne. So there were MRK leaders from all, all over the world and I was invited to represent Malaysia. So I presented uh, the work that Singapore. I've done. In, I never thought that I would reach um, that level because like I said, I just started with, you know, a, a support group that's supposed to be just hang out with me and my sister. I never thought it would bring me to Melbourne and, and meet so many people from so many countries here. Yeah. If you have a daughter, or if you have a younger sister, or if you yourself, you're already about, say, 16 years old, and you haven't gotten your period, please, please, please go and see a gynecologist. You don't have to wait for you to get sick for you to see a doctor. Uh, we don't have uterus transplant yet in Malaysia, but we hope to have it maybe in 10 years' time, because it's going to take a long time, because... Um, uh, we have to think about um, fundings from the government uh, mm. to train uh, doctors and surgeons to do uterus transplant and also we need to get green light from the Majlis Fatwa. So we have been jumped to the conclusion that whatever happens in our life, so we have to be strong for ourselves. So what I can conclude today is the struggle you are today is developing the strength you need for tomorrow. So I would like to give a pleasure thank you to you, Madam Ruth Azali Abdurrahim, for having a time for our interview session. I wish you have a wonderful life with your family and may Allah grant you success from the year to the year. Thank you. So have a nice rest day with your beloved family and stay safe at home. I wish you good luck in everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. all to all of you guys too with your assignment. I hope it works out. Um, if you have any any other question that you need to ask me, just you can just text me away. Okay.